Hello guys, it's Mindforge back on a build. Today I want to build a pitchfork build for you guys. Uh, I'd like to show you a new tool I got for better paralleling first. So uh, I don't want to talk that much. I like to start right. What I take for the build today is some 26 GK1 kidney puncher wire. And for the wrapping I will take some 40G SS wire and uh, for the cores I may try the 0.4 SS ribbon from Kidney Puncher. So yeah, for the start to the build I will take some of the 26G. I take about 40 centimeters to get some safety zone and a bit more space if we don't start at the right point or something so leave you a bit more space so I will mount it in my, the chuck of my drill you all know that to straighten it out And end here, put it on my swivels, so give it a good twist on the end. So if we got that, we'll mount that and give it a few twists to straighten it out more. So if we got that, we need to prepping our dual spools, I will take the 40G dual spools, I will make a knot and then we are back and I will show you how we get further. So we are back, I make a knot of the two spools. Yeah, and put it between my legs and now I want to show you a new tool I got it's a it's a clip from a headset from a phone so the only difference is it got little tooths in here let me try to show you that a little bit better maybe you can see that there are little tooths in here also in this direction as yes, you see that and I drilled a hole in here to feed a wire between that clamp and put it between some of these little tooths here. Yes. Uh, that keeps the wire flat, the parallel wire, and keep it in place and uh, you should do an, a better job on this. So I will feed the wire through that hole, pull that through and put it on my drill. If now that thing should look like this the wire the two wires go through that hole and are on the beginning of this clamp so i will pull out a bit so you need to have a bit attention on the wires that they stay on the spools while you're doing that put the bag on my legs and pull the clamp a bit down and mount that on my drill Go into the slow mode because the first rubs I need to make slow. So we will need a bit space for the clamp. Let me do that a bit better here. So if we got that, we will pull the clamp right to the beginning so it stays here maybe you can see that not that well but i only push that on the core wire you can also clamp it on the core wire but then the tooth may be scratching on the on the on the parallel wire and i don't know what's happened then so i will leave that right on the wire on the, on the actual core wire so 
Now I will take the spools. Wait. So given these two wires the same amount of tension, just and let the magic happen. You only need to stay on the same angle and this thing is doing the parallel wire just uh, from alone. So I love it. Let's try this and I go in fast mode and we will see what's happened. So we hit the end and you see it's going through all the way with no no problems. I got no overlapping wires here. And the first time I tested this I was very very surprised how well this works. It works also on ribbon. I tested it on a 4 ply stack point 4 and it's also doing it very well because the the clip is a little bit curved on the beginning so the wire can not stuck or something. I don't know what's happened if you take more than four plies, maybe a 10 ply or something, I don't know. Maybe it don't work, but for this, for the round wires, it's if you got any problems with paralleling wire, this is uh, just uh, a very useful tool. The, the thing is, that got this little tooth and it holding the wire parallel. So the only thing you need to uh, take your attention is that you don't go too further with the spool so that the, the clamp is is pulled over the over the core wire. So then you got maybe a little spacings. But if you keep that on a, on a right angle, it will drive from alone through the core. So. If we got that, I will take this clamp and pull it a bit backward and then we will go the, to the rest because the clamp is maybe hit our twisted end so I will avoid that it's maybe yeah broke or something so I pull it a bit down and make the rest free end. So if we got that, we will cut the ends here taking the spools off and the clipper so I will put that back and then we will pull down one wire you know that procedure so so this later. is how the end look like I want to show you that how good that is you see all the wire I don't go through the end because it's very shaky with that cam here in my hand so but you see I want to I will take off now one wire and the spacing should be perfect. That's my end. You see I go a little bit further to secure the actual spacing wire. So yeah, I will take that off and we see us on the table. So we are back. I removed that one wire. The spacing looks very good uh, like I wanted to. And I want to show you the clip again. I've done that also with 44G and it works like a charm you just have to watch about that angle i told you before but um yeah i will test that a bit more and it's helpful on this point so now we will go further with the point four ribbon for the first stage and cut the bad end here and we will pull out twice the length of our spaced clapton here 
Yep. Cut that. For all those guys, they are annoyed from the length of the video, you can easily fast forward this. So we will fold that in half. And bend that, that first end, trying to look that they are stay over each other parallel and got no no V shape. And this time we don't need the V shape. You will push that. I will push that with my tweezers, the ends, so that it get flat as possible. So now I will take this two strands hold it on the core to see if they are fit in length and yes they do and now I will put the ends in my chuck on the on that uh, on that core so let me just twist it a bit so now the trick is to make a few wraps to get it in place that it stays parallel and then you can just fuse it. Uh, in 90% of the builds it will stay straight. So I will make that and then we will go into the macro and then you see how I bind that on the beginning. Maybe I use some hot glue. Yes, uh, see you then. So you see how I start here. I fuse in that in every third space and on the start you see there was the clip not right on here and we got a little ooh, a little space in here sorry got a little space in, in that point and when we go further it's perfect you see that I will finish that and you see also you got a little angle in here. That's normal because you have to move forward with the warp wire. So you can't avoid that you get a little angle if you skip fusing that stuff. So I will finish that, the whole wire, until the end. Uh, on the end I secure the, the two plies on, uh, of ribbon with some hot glue. Um, you know that if you don't know what I mean, just look my other videos and yes, see you then. So I finished the wire and the end product of the first stage should look like this. I hope it's a bit better quality, please forgive me for the bad quality, but I think it's so tiny, you need to try it by your own and use some magnifying glasses to get that right, but you see, one side get a little angle to the right and the other side get it to the left. So we will maybe use this for the um, for the upper side on the on the last use and this downside, but we will see later. But um, you can also see on the wire that the fusing or the spacing with the clip is on point. Maybe uh, I can show you the clip here a bit better because it's a macro, so. I will show you that. Did you see the little twos in that clip? Yeah, sorry. So you can easily put that on round wire and go with the wire through the middle and it will fuse correctly, you will see. So I will cut that in half and no, I don't will cut that, that in half now. Uh, we go on to another one ply or two ply. I, I don't know. Maybe I will take only one ply for the second stage and we will 
fuse the second stage into wait where is my camera here uh, we will fuse that in one of these two spacings here I will go on this uh, this and this and this and this and if we done that we will cut it in half and then go to the final fuse to finish to finish that pitchfork build so I added another ply of the 0.4 ribbon here you see should look like this and we will fuse that now uh, right into the gap before the last fuse here 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 and so on all the way and if I'm ready I will show you but you see that's the time-consuming part and the beginning you see we got a little gap here in the in, in some fuses but I told you on the beginning is where well, the clip was not on right but after this it's pretty good I think so I will fuse that now and yeah see ya so guys I started to fuse that and I'd like to show you what I'm doing here trying to keep the angle to get started nope that's the right one that's the right one Yeah, you see, and if you got that angle, you can easily go further now out of cam. But yeah, you see what we're going to do here. And the last fuse is then in the in the leftover gap. So I will do that now. Uh, you need a bit of time and patience to that, but it will pay off. So I'm ready and. All the wire should look like this. Yes, and now the last fuse I will cut in half and think about what I take for the main core. So, see you. So this is how I bound that shit. And uh, I put in the middle 4 ply 0.4 SS wire and one strand of 0.4 cancel a1 and um, yeah I bound it on the beginning together and let's go to the end here you see I just uh, take a drip of hot glue and melt in that on the end together and uh, the first clip you see here going through my swivel into my swivel so I always keep that so you see how we start with this clap and put in one ribbon wire another another and then we end here so you got no problems to bind any ends and maybe crashed up the ribbon so yeah I will now start to fuse that so you see I started already the fusing part the most important thing on this is um, if you put the two rails together like this you have to watch if you may adjust one in into uh, the left or the right to get this fuses here as much as possible in the right space you see on the end here the first fuse the smallest got not and the start every time the right angle if you got the right angle every time and be patient and have steady hands it will always look better and better I do this now you I could also take this fuse this and this but I skip one to get a better angle on this I will fuse that a second time into the last gap to get the final fuse then. So 
I got this fuse ready now and I will go to the last fuse and to the last gap and you see the pitchfork is getting close to the end. So I'm on the last fuse, you see how it should look like, you see where I am now and I will fuse that to the end and then this wire is finally finished. So that's the finished wire, I want to show you. When it's finish, finished, how it looks like. And that's the end. Trying to get it in focus. Yeah. And there we start with a normal parallel clip. So guys, we are back with that wire, 20 centimeters of that finished pitchfork build or reverse staggerton or call it how you want. Um, that takes some time. If you're new at building, don't start with this. It's a very hard build and you need some practicing and also some feeling for the wires. So uh, I would suggest to start or give you the advice uh, to start with Clapton's or something that you get the feeling for the wire. So I take also a shot from this wire and show you on the end of the video. For the coils and for the color shots, and for the, all the other stuff, please check out my Instagram at Mineforge. Check also the team pages from Team Goon and Team Build Mode. Show them some love. And I wish all my supporters and friends a Merry, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We see us next year with some new videos. I would appreciate it if you subscribe my channel and leave a comment for sure. And yeah, that's it for today. Have a good one. Peace.